For a couple months now, I've been trying to figure out how the Coinbase APIs work now that Coinbase Pro has been sunset, and turns out it's super confusing. But thanks to some of the viewers of this channel, Coinbase engineers, and ChatGPT, I was finally able to figure out how to automate deposits and withdrawals from Coinbase. So if you guys have watched the previous video about how to automate your trades using Coinbase Advanced Trader that I did a while ago that I'll have linked up in the cards, by the end of this video, you should have a fully automated system where money is coming in from your checking account and streaming into Coinbase on a regular basis. That fiat money within Coinbase is being regularly converted into some different cryptocurrency of your choice. And then finally, those funds that have been automatically deposited and automatically purchased on Coinbase are going to be automatically withdrawn to whatever your hardware wallet of choice is, or your favorite multi-sig wallet, or even a DeFi wallet. If you guys get stuck at any point today, all of the content that we talk about will be down in the description, and a full written walkthrough will be over at my blog, ret.blog. So go down below and smash the like button for Coinbase automations, and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so if you've never done this before, you're gonna to come to console.aws.amazon.com. And if you're not familiar with AWS, I've done a video in the past about how we use it on this channel. So definitely check that out up in the cards. But the first thing we're going to do here is click on Lambda. If you don't see Lambda on your recently visited, you can go up to the search bar and just type in Lambda. So the first thing you're gonna do when you click into Lambda is go over to left nav and click on layers and then you'll click up here on create layer. And if you've already followed my tutorials in the past and set up other layers, specifically the Kraken layer, you can probably get away with just using that because all we need for this Coinbase script to work is the requests module. But if you haven't done this before, we're gonna call this Coinbase V2 API. And then down here in description, we're gonna say includes requests module. And then for the zip file, we're going to come over to the blog link that'll be down in the description. And we're going to click on Coinbase V2 layer here and save that to our desktops. Next, we'll head back over to AWS and we'll click on upload and we'll go ahead and just upload that layer that we just downloaded from the blog. And we'll click on x86-64 here. And then we'll give this Python 3.9 and Python 3.8 as compatible runtimes. And then we'll go ahead down to the very bottom and click on create. And so now that you've successfully created this layer, we can go ahead and click back up in the breadcrumb trail and click on Lambda, and then we'll go to functions. So now that we're on the functions page here, we're gonna go ahead and click on the orange create function button. And then we'll go create our first function called Coinbase deposits. And we'll change this runtime to Python 3.9. And we'll scroll down to the bottom here and click on this orange create function button that might be blocked right now by my head. Once we wait a couple seconds, we're going to be in our Coinbase deposits function that we just created. The first thing that we want to do is click on configuration right up here. And then we'll scroll down and edit the timeout and change this timeout to maybe one minute and three seconds instead of three seconds. And then we'll go ahead and click on save. Next, after we've changed the configuration timeout here, we can go back over to code and scroll all the way to the bottom and we'll find add a layer here under layers. And then we'll go ahead here and click on custom layers and we'll add the layer that we added earlier, the Coinbase V2 API. And if you have multiple versions, you'll have to select a version. Obviously you should only have one version of this. So we'll go ahead and click on add. Now we'll go ahead and come back to code and we'll just delete everything that's here in the Lambda function and we'll head back over to our GitHub gist that I'll have linked down in the description. We'll go ahead and copy this entire Coinbase deposits script here right click, copy, back over to Lambda, and you have to do Control V or Command V if you're on Mac for paste, you can't do right click paste or it will give you this error. So now that you've copy and pasted the script, you're going to need to go ahead and come over here and right click and create a new file. And we're going to call this new file config dot json and then we'll double click on config dot json to open it up next you'll come back over to the github gist down in the description for the config dot json you'll copy this entire gist and then you'll do the same thing and paste it over here in the config dot json file and basically this is where we're going to make all of our changes you won't have to make any changes in the lambda function dot py that we looked at earlier what we will do though is you can see up here it says changes not deployed we will go ahead and deploy the entire function it deploys both files so you don't have to worry about deploying twice but basically whenever you make a change if i just make a bunch of changes here it's going to say that these changes are not deployed which means that aws does not yet have the changes and so every time that you make a significant code change you should go ahead and click on deploy so that your work is saved so the first two variables you'll see that we need to fill out here are the api key and the api secret so to fill those out we're going to go over to coinbase.com and to get new api keys we're going to go click up on our pictures in the top right and click on settings next we'll go up to the top here and click on api and as you can see here i have two api keys already set up but if you're new to this 
this, you might not have any setup. So you can go ahead and click on new API key. And now we get to create our permissions for our API key. I'm going to go ahead and for testing purposes, just select every single cryptocurrency wallet so that we don't run into any issues here. If you know that you're only going to be using certain cryptocurrencies, you could select only those wallets. And then as for permissions, I'm going to be selecting them all also. If you wanted to make your API keys a little bit more secure, you could go in here and play around with exactly which permissions that you need to execute these scripts. I assume for the deposit scripts, you'll need all of the permissions for deposits. And obviously for the withdrawals, you'll need all the permissions for withdrawals. And I'll leave the documentation to this V2 API down in the description. If you wanna learn more about the different endpoints and what permissions you need to access those endpoints. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and select all on both of these and just scroll down to the very bottom and click on create. And so now we'll see that I have an API key and an API secret. I'm going to right click and copy this API key and then control V to paste it under API. API key here and then do the exact same thing for API secret and put it back in my config.json and then I'm going to go ahead and click on deploy to save those changes. So the next pieces of information that we need to fill out here for our deposit script is the deposit ID and the payment method. And as far as I know, Coinbase doesn't show you anywhere within Coinbase's application where you can find this deposit ID and payment method for your different linked bank accounts. And so what I've done is if we click back over to the Lambda function and we scroll down to this list payment methods function. At the end of this function, I'm basically printing all of the different payment method IDs that are linked with your account. And so then if we scroll down to the Lambda handler, we'll see that the first thing that it's doing is calling that list payment methods function. So every time you run this script, if you keep this line in here, it's gonna show you all of the payment methods that are linked to your account. And that's important because the very first time we run this, we're not gonna be able to deposit anything because back in config.json, we don't have a deposit ID and we don't have a linked payment method that we want to pull the money from. So next let's go ahead and test this Lambda function. It's not gonna be able to deposit anything because we haven't filled out the information in config.json. And the very first time we click on test, we need to fill out this name. We can just call this test and then scroll down to the very bottom and click on save. And now when we go ahead and hit test, it's going to run the script for real. So hopefully we should see a bunch of payment methods that are linked with our Coinbase accounts here. And it's telling us here that we got this error in deposit fiat and it's because we didn't fill out any of this information in config.json. So the script is freaking out at us. If you want to have it not do that, you can come back over here and just put a little hashtag in front of deposit fiat so that when it runs, you're not seeing all of this garbage information. So let's go ahead and do that and click on deploy and then just run our test again. And so now you can see the logs are much, much cleaner than they were before because we didn't call that deposit fiat function that was breaking. And now we're seeing the deposit IDs for all of our different accounts that are linked with our Coinbase account. So you can see here, my first one is my Coinbase cash account which is the US dollar deposit account within your Coinbase account. Everyone should have this exact same cash, whatever your fiat currency is account. And so when you see this number here, that's really big with a bunch of dashes in it next to ID, you wanna copy this and paste this into your deposit ID. Next, if we come back over to execution results, we can see that I have a Charles Schwab investor checking account a Capital One savings account and Apple Pay all linked to my Coinbase account. And the account that I want to deposit from into Coinbase is this Charles Schwab checking account. If you have a bunch of different accounts, that's why you're going to also need to run this so that you can see what the IDs are for your different linked accounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the ID associated with my Charles Schwab account. I'll come back over here to config.json and I'll paste that information here in payment method. Next, I'm gonna go back over to the Lambda function and instead of commenting out deposit deposit fiat, I'm going to comment out list payment methods because we don't really need to see that information anymore now that we've filled out config.json. And so now you should be seeing that we have the API key, the API secret, the deposit ID, the payment method, the deposit amount, and the deposit currency. And that's all the information that we're going to need to successfully make a deposit into Coinbase. So let's go ahead and change this deposit amount to $24, just so it's kind of a weird number. And then we'll go ahead and click on deploy. And now when we hit test, because we commented out list payment methods and we uncommented out deposit fiat down here in Lambda Handler, it should actually, when we hit test, go and deposit whatever amount of money you've told it to deposit in here on config.json, in my case, $24. So if we come over to my Coinbase account, we can see that I have $22.43. But after I run this test, I should have about $46 in my Coinbase account.
let's go ahead and just click on test. It's saying you deposited $24 into your Coinbase account, and then it's giving me this data with a bunch of information that would be helpful to me if I was trying to debug the deposit, but let's go ahead over to Coinbase and just see if this amount has updated at all. Maybe if we hit refresh. Yeah, you can see that now I have $46 in my account versus the 22 that I had beforehand. So, so far we've successfully deposited money into Coinbase. And if you've watched the previous video that I did on this topic that I'll have linked up in the cards, you would know that in that video, we were able to buy some cryptocurrency from Coinbase every single day or every single hour or once a week or twice a week or however often we wanted to. And so the final part of this solution is withdrawing that cryptocurrency that we purchased on Coinbase out to a cold storage hardware wallet device. And once we implement withdrawal, and we put both deposits and withdrawals on a schedule, this entire process is going to be happening automatically without you having to do anything. So next, let's go ahead and jump back into the computer and talk about how we're going to be automating our withdrawals. All right, so back in AWS, we're going to search again for Lambda. And then here on the functions page, because we've already created the layer and the same layer will work for both functions, we just need to create a new function. And we can call this function Coinbase withdrawals. And again, we'll choose the runtime as Python 3.9 and we'll scroll to the bottom and click on create function. Now that the function is created, again, we're gonna to come to configuration and we're going to edit the timeout and change the timeout to one minute. And then we'll scroll down and hit save. And then again, we'll click back over to the code tab, scroll down to the bottom and click on add a layer. We'll choose custom layers and we'll choose our Coinbase V2 API layer that we added to our previous function. And we'll just go ahead and add this again here. Next, we'll scroll up to our Lambda function here and we'll just highlight and delete everything that they have. And we'll come over to the link to the Coinbase withdraw code that again will be down in the description. And we'll just go ahead and copy all of this code here and then go ahead and paste that back in AWS. Next, we can go ahead and deploy to save our changes. And then we're actually gonna head back to our old Lambda function to get back our config.json. So let's go ahead and open this little menu here on the left and then open functions. And then we can filter by last modified and we can see that Coinbase deposits is here. We'll scroll down in here and grab config.json. Copy this. Back to the menu, back to functions. Last modified again here and then back to withdraws. And then if we right click over here, we can create a new file called config.json. Click into that file. And we'll go ahead and paste our config.json from the deposit code into the withdraw code here. And so now you can see some fields that we need to fill out specifically for withdrawals are the Bitcoin address or, you know, if this was an Ethereum address for you, you could change this to say like crypto address. But then if you did that, you would need to change Bitcoin address here on line 14 to say crypto address. But you could change this for whatever coin that you want to withdraw from Coinbase. I'm going to obviously leave this as Bitcoin and I'm going to be withdrawing Bitcoin to my Casa Multisig. So in this config.json, we need to define the crypto withdraw address and we need to define the withdraw ID, which again is one of these internal to Coinbase ID fields that I don't know how you would get access to without using the API. So if we come back over to Lambda function, I did something similar to the last script here where I'm calling this list accounts function. And so let's go ahead and comment out our withdraw crypto code so that we ignore any of the errors that we would be getting from not having a properly filled out config XML and just call this list accounts function first. Let's scroll up to the top and deploy our code. We'll go ahead and hit test for the first time and fill out our event name and then just hit save. And then now when we hit test, we should be calling this list accounts function which should be giving us the information that we need to fill out our withdraw ID. So let's go ahead and hit test. And it looks like it's saying, I don't have a config.json. And if we look over on the left, I actually spelled it wrong. So I can right click here and hit rename. I call it config.json. So let's fix that, deploy our changes, and then we'll go ahead and test again. What this function list accounts back here is doing is it's basically showing you every single withdraw ID for every single coin balance that you have on Coinbase. So we can see here that I have a withdraw ID for my staked Tezos and I have 0.003 staked Tezos, which is approximately $0. I have some Seagold wallet, which is also $0, it looks like. I have some comp, which is a little bit, which is three cents. And I've gotten a lot of these different kind of weird garbagey tokens from doing the Coinbase earned stuff. And so you might have a similar situation where this is listing out 
balances to wallets that you didn't really think that you have. I have nine cents of Stellar, it looks like, and seven cents of EOS. See here that I have $40 of USD. I've got like $9 of Ethereum, and I've got $36 of Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and take the withdraw ID for the Bitcoin wallet. The withdraw ID is always going to be above the wallet name. So let's go ahead and copy this withdraw ID here and head over back to config.json and then paste that withdraw ID within the withdraw ID field and go ahead and click on deploy. So I've got my iPhone here and I'm going to open up my Casa mobile app and I'm going to get a new receiving address for my three of five multi-sig and I'm going to copy that from my iPhone and just paste it over here into the config.json. And you're going to do the exact same thing with whatever your receiving address is. And then obviously, if you were withdrawing some different currency, you would change this from Bitcoin to whatever that currency is. So let's go ahead and deploy these new changes. And once that's updated, we can come back here to Lambda function. Now we'll go ahead and comment out this list accounts code and uncomment the withdraw crypto code. So now we're ready to withdraw some crypto. And we can see here that this withdraw crypto function is taking two parameters. The first parameter is a static amount that you want to withdraw. And then the second parameter is a flag called withdraw all that is either true or false. If withdraw all is true, it doesn't matter what your amount is. Coinbase is going to try to withdraw all of the cryptocurrency that is within that wallet that you specified. So if we come back to execution results, we'll see that my Bitcoin wallet has 0.00127170 Bitcoin. If I tried to withdraw all, Coinbase is going to try to withdraw that entire balance. Now, the problem with that is it costs network fees to send that Bitcoin transaction and Coinbase doesn't tell you how much that network fee is going to be. And so what I've done is in config.json, I've defined a parameter called withdraw factor, which basically is saying if you choose to try to withdraw all, because I think that's how most people are going to use the script. If you choose to withdraw all and you want to withdraw all the Bitcoin from your Coinbase wallet like once a week or something like that. You actually can't withdraw all of it because some amount of that is going to be dedicated to Bitcoin miner fees and Coinbase isn't going to tell us how much that is. So depending on the amount that you're trying to withdraw, you might need to change this withdraw factor a little bit or a lot, right? If the Bitcoin miner fee is $1 and you only have $5 in your account, then that means that this withdraw factor needs to be around 80%, right? Because that fee is going to represent 80% of the value of your current Bitcoin wallet. Whereas obviously if you were trying to withdraw 100 dollars and the minor fee was again one dollar you would be able to get away with withdrawing 99 percent of the money in that bitcoin wallet on your coinbase account and so really you'll have to play around with this and see what number is right for you for some quick guidance i would assume like a two dollar withdraw fee or something and then do your math based on that so if you think you'll have a hundred dollars a week to withdraw and you think that the minor fee is going to be two dollars then obviously you would do one minus two over a hundred and you would see that you need a 0.98 withdrawal factor. Obviously, if you had $1,000 a week to withdraw, now you have a 0.998 withdrawal factor. If you think you're only going to have $10 a week, then you're going to need a 0.8 withdrawal factor. So hopefully that made sense to everyone. I think you're going to have to play around with this to see what works for you. And the good news is you're going to get real time feedback like you'll see here in a second once I go ahead and hit the test button. So if we go back to execution results, we can see that I have like a $36 balance. And so if we do that exact same thing for me here, it looks like I'm going to need about a 0.94. So let's go ahead and put in 0.94 deploy our changes and see if this works. First over on Coinbase, we'll just go ahead and visually confirm that I have $36 of Bitcoin here on the exchange. And then I'll come back over to my script and go ahead and click on test. So now it's saying that I withdrew my point whatever 11954 Bitcoin from Coinbase. So let's go ahead and refresh this page and see if I still have $36 of Bitcoin here. Looks like it is showing $36 of Bitcoin. I'll throw up a recording on the screen here somewhere of my Casa mobile app, but hopefully you can see that when I check the wallet and I click on this pending transaction, it's showing that 0.001194 Bitcoin, which is exactly the same amount if we go back to the withdraw here, that's the exact same amount that it was saying it would withdraw from Coinbase. So I think if we wait a little bit here on Coinbase and we keep refreshing, Hopefully our Bitcoin balance will change to reflect that that withdrawal has gone through. And actually if I click, so this is kind of confusing and they probably need to update the UI here, but if you go all the way back to my assets and you scroll down, you'll see that I, it says that I have $36 of Bitcoin, but if I click on this, and then I click on Bitcoin primary balance here, now it's showing that I did in fact make that withdrawal for 
you know, $34, which is, again, 94% of the value of the Bitcoin that was in this wallet address. And unfortunately, I think that's as good as we're going to be able to get it. If you set that to be the exact number, it's not going to process the withdraw. And so hopefully Coinbase can update this in the future and make the user experience a little bit better for developers. But as of now, I think you're stuck with this estimation method. It shouldn't be that big of a deal because at any given time, you should only have about a week's worth of Bitcoin on the exchange because every week you're processing a new withdraw within AWS, which I think is a good segue to now start talking about how we're going to automate these deposits and these withdrawals within Coinbase, whereby every seven days we're making a new deposit and then every seven days we're making a new withdrawal. Let's go up here to search and just type in event bridge. So over here in event bridge, we're going to click on event bridge schedule and we're going to click on create schedule. We'll call this Coinbase deposit scheduler automates Coinbase deposits from my bank account once a week. And you could actually make this once a month just to show off like a different kind of schedule just so that it's not exactly the same, but you'll come down here to recurring schedule and you can either create a cron based schedule, which is a little bit more complicated, but it gives you a lot more control over the timing, or you can just click on rate based schedule, which I think will be the best thing for most people. And you can say that I want to make a deposit once every, if it was 15 days, maybe that's how often you get paid. If it was 30 days, maybe that's, you know, once a month, maybe you get paid once a month. If you want to create like a really fine grain schedule here, you could say, I want to deposit on the fifth minute of the 12th hour of the 15th and the 30th, because maybe that's when you get paid every single month. You don't care what the week is and every single year. And you'll see that if you create a cron schedule that is correct, right? If I just came in here and just started typing nonsense, we would see invalid cron expression. So if you create one that's valid, you're going to see the next 10 trigger dates, which obviously for me, the 15th and the 30th of April, May, June, July, and so on and so forth. But again, if you don't want to get too fancy with this, you can just use a rate based schedule. I'm going to scroll down here and turn off the flexible time window. And then if you want, you can create a start date and an end date. So if you only wanted to do this for a couple months, or if you wanted to come back in here and check up on this and have to renew doing this, like every six months or every year, you could set up those options. I'm going to skip them for now. And then here on this next screen, we're going to click on AWS Lambda function to invoke the Lambda function that we just created. So obviously we're going to do the deposits first. So we'll click on here, Coinbase deposits, and then we'll scroll down and click on next. I think it's probably best to turn this retry policy off just so that you're not like failing and then creating like nine deposits or something in the same day. And then I think you can probably scroll down and just go ahead and hit next and then scroll down here at the end and click on create schedule. And then if you ever wanted to stop this schedule, let's say you're on the front page of AWS, you had just logged in again, you would search for event bridge, you would come over here to schedules, on the left, you would scroll down and find the scheduler that you just created, obviously in this case, Coinbase deposit scheduler. And then you could just come up here and click on disable, or if you never wanted to use it ever again, you could click on delete. Next, we're going to do the exact same things with withdrawals. So we're just gonna come over here and click on schedules. We'll click on create new schedule. We'll click on recurring schedule. We'll do the same thing, a cron based schedule. And maybe this time I wanna do it on the 11th minute of the 15th hour of, we don't care what day of the month, every single month, every Friday, every year. And so now we can see that every Friday I'm going to be making a withdrawal. That's April 7th, April 14th, April 21st, and so on and so forth. And again, if we mess this up, right, we would see that it was invalid. So this is only going to show up if you write your cron expression correctly. Alternatively, most people will be able to get away with just saying once every seven days. We'll again, turn off flexible time window and go ahead and hit next. Forgot the schedule name, we'll call this Coinbase withdraw schedule. Withdraws from my Bitcoin wallet to my Casa multisig. Scroll down to the bottom here and hit next. And then we'll click on AWS Lambda and we will select our withdraw from Coinbase function and then click on next. We'll turn off the retry policy here and then we'll go ahead and click on next again. And then we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and click on create schedule. And so now if we click back over here on schedules on the left, we'll be brought back to the scheduler and we'll see that we have our deposit scheduler that's running every 15th and the 30th every month. 
and then we'll have our withdraw schedule that's running every Friday. And again, with Cron Expressions, you can make these as complicated as you want, and you can always click into them to disable them or delete them if you have no use for them anymore. The fact that Coinbase created all these different APIs, one that's handling the deposits and the withdrawals, and one that's for advanced trader that's allowing you to make trades was really confusing to me. So thank you to everyone that sent me code to help me create this video and helped me walk through the documentation. In particular, an engineer from Coinbase helped me out, and so if you guys wanna give him any feedback on the API, I'll leave his Twitter link down in the description of this video. Also, if any of you guys are interested in the Fear and Greed Index or any of the other tutorials that I've done on the channel that were previously created for the Gemini API, and you're interested in me turning that into Coinbase content, let me know and I'll probably be releasing scripts like that over on the blog instead of trying to like create basically the exact same YouTube video over like again and again and again here on this channel. So definitely subscribe to the blog if you're interested in any of those kind of more incremental code updates or code changes. And link to that obviously will be down in the description. Like this video if you learned something and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. See you next week.